All right. Um, Dakota Access Pipeline, whatever the fuck this means. You definitely have my... uh, Peak my interest here. Um, hey, hi, Bill. I've been listening to your podcast for one and a half years. You're a very funny comedian. I was hoping to get your thoughts on the Dakota Access Pipeline. Now, for some reason, I feel like this is some sort of jokey thing, and they just wanted to hear me say it out loud. But I'll look it up. Dakota Access Pipeline. Let's see what the fuck this is. Dakota Access Pipeline protests in North Dakota turned violent. All right. When do protests not turn violent? It's always this protesters, and then the cops show up, and they, everybody take it easy, and then somebody goes, you fucking take it easy, man, and then somebody throws a punch, and then it's, it's a fucking, it's a brawl. All right, protests against the Dakota Access Pipeline in North Dakota turned violent on Saturday. Demonstrators supporting the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe faced off with private security officers from the Dallas-based Energy Transfer Partners. Wait, it's on Native American land and they have and the big corporation has their own security officers? Is Julia Roberts already optioned this for an Oscar-winning role? She goes in and somehow figures out how to defeat the Dallas-based energy transfer partners. A video from the scene showed security officers threatening protesters with dogs. As all things considered reported... Hundreds of Native Americans from tribes across the country have set up a camp near the construction site in North Dakota. The Army Corps of Engineers approved the oil pipeline in July, allowing it to run under the Missouri River close to the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe Reservation. And you know what's going to happen. Eventually, that pipeline's going to burst, as they always do. Protesters worry that the $3.8 billion pipeline, which is slated to run through four states could disturb sacred sites and affect the reservation's drinking water. Absolutely. If human beings are involved, there's always the chance that can happen. The, the show Democracy Now! was at the site of the protest Saturday and documented some tense moments. Dogs appeared to bite protesters and security guards appeared to use pepper spray. Warning, the video below includes some fleeting explicatives. So I think I can handle this. Let's criminal. You guys are criminals. Okay. Go get your money somewhere else. We're standing at the construction site of the Dakota Access Pipeline. It looks like there are at least Yeah, these people are not going to win. It's just it's a bunch of people saying no wearing like hipster hats while people drive bulldozers. It's already happening. Um Oh yeah. It looks disorganized. There's a bunch of different signs. My name is Jacob, Jacob Johns. And where are you from? I'm from Spokane, Washington. I'm Hopi and I'm from Ottawa. And can you describe what you see? This is so nuts. Like, to come down and yell at people on bulldozers, like, I guess because you want to you get the, uh, the attention of the media. But they're on bulldozers on the other side of a wire. So, like, what, what are you going to do? Uh, once protesters arrived at the construction area, they broke down a wire fence by stepping and jumping on it. Then, of course, immediately they're trespassing. According to numerous witnesses, within five minutes, the crowd of protesters, estimated to be a few hundred people, became violent. They stampeded into the construction area with horses, dogs, and vehicles. Okay. And it was said more... The sheriff said it was more like a riot than a protest, but the cops always say that. You know, and then the protesters always say the cops throw the first punch. You never know who to believe. This is like, uh, let's let's watch this. This is like uh, protester WWE. All right, this guy's got a cell phone. He looks to be Native American, or maybe he's uh, appropriating their culture. You know, having his hair long. I don't know what's going on. There's a fucking helicopter. Let's get to the dogs. Water is life. Somebody held that, and it was written. There was a feather in the background. All right, now here's a woman. Uh Uh-oh, this isn't going to end well. They're going through the fence. (laughs) Oh, shit. Oh, somebody got... Nice tackle! Nice tackle! Oh, now they got some dogs. 
They, I think they just, they're, they're going Tiananmen Square here. They're just trying to get in front of them. Yeah, this sounds crazy. This sounds like uh, the usual big business thing that they, I don't, I don't know anything about it. I don't know anything about it. Um, I do feel like eventually they're going to do enough of that fracking and then they'll fuck up all the water, all the drinking water. And I don't think corporations care. I just think that'll be, well, then that's great. Then there'll be no fresh water for anybody to use. So they'll have to all go to Nestle for their fresh water, you know? And then we'll say that it's distilled, but it really isn't. It sort of is. And when they get sick, the class action suit versus the money we're going to make, yeah, we're not going to give a fuck. We'll pay them off. That'll be it. And uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't have any faith in anything, to be honest with you. I think we're just going to completely destroy the planet and each other. But in the meantime, if I can make you laugh a little bit. <laughs> you remember at the end of George Carlin's life when people were saying he got too fucking angry? I, I didn't think that. I was just like, yeah, this guy's making a lot of sense to me. It was still funny to me. Still made sense. I thought, uh... I don't know. However, he read the tea leaves. It made sense to me. Um, I don't know. Just about the whole way we go about fucking communicating with each other. We just end up screaming and yelling. And then we get physical and somebody hits somebody and then all, all hell breaks loose. That's, that's what happens. It happens. You know, I do it. I started discussing this election with some people the other day. And within th- three minutes of me talking, three quarters of the people walked out of the room. I mean, that, that's how insufferable I am. Is that the right word? Um, women's suffrage? Uh, whatever the fuck it is. Um, what do I think about it? I'm sorry, I'm going to get your thoughts on the Dakota Access Pipeline. Um, I don't know, dude. There's just too many fucking people because everyone, you know, I love a Tesla, I love a Prius, Prius and all that shit, but if you get all these cars, then all of a sudden everybody has to plug in their car then that's more energy. I know when you make electricity that, you know, you need machines and the machines need the oil. So it's just, it's, we consume is what we do. And there's too many of us. That's the fucking problem. All these technological advancements that we make are tremendous. It's just the amount of people that have to live off of them. That's where, uh, it's like getting fat. You know what I mean? All fat is, is you're, you're, you're taking in more calories than you're burning. And that's kind of like what we're doing, except we're, we're taking more, more than we're giving back. And eventually it's, it's got to run out. Uh, so I think there's going to be a drastic decision at some point. It's going to have, going to have to be made about the population. You know, <laughs> it's just inevitable. There's, you know, when there's fucking six million people left, why did I pick that number? I shouldn't have said that number. Let me take a, 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 a more empathetic number because that's what I was thinking of. I was really thinking Hitler. I mean, someone's going to have to fuck. Someone's going to end up doing that. If we could somehow all sit down and talk this out, and, and this, but you, this is what you would literally have to do. You'd literally have to try to get everybody in the world on the same page and to see it the same way. <clears throat> you know? You know, if, you're, if you're at a fucking, you, you, you order a UFC event, you get 10 people in the room. I mean, how many can people agree on the one place to order from? If you put it up to a vote, you know, you're going to get the whole world to get on page. It, it, somebody's just going to have to do the old right there, Fred. Um, I don't know, dude. They should, they should do it first voluntarily. Like they should be, all right, this is the deal. We're going to have to take out we got to get this number down below a billion, and there's seven and a half billion of us. So uh, we're going to get to this number no matter what. It's like when a, when a fucking flight is oversold and they try to get some volunteers. You know, I wonder if the tree huggers, you know, I'm a lazy tree hugger. I love nature, but, you know, you know I'm not going to go make a sign or chain myself to a sapling, you know. So. You know, I talk a good game, but I, I don't do any of the shit, right? So what I'm wondering is if, if they're going, look, we're going to get the population down below to a billion, one way or the other. We're asking for some volunteers. If you're willing to, to uh, walk into the wood chipper or whatever the fuck you have to do, um, you know, we'll give a voucher. <laughs> 
to the surviving members of your family or whatever. I mean, but even then, they, I mean, you have to, if you're gonna if you're gonna cut it by that much, because um, I literally think that that's what that's what we're gonna run into, and then there's gonna there's gonna be this big fight. Like I think at that Bilderberg shit, like this is what they have to talk about. Going okay, we have to keep the best of the best of each race, each gender. You hope that they're they're gonna do that, right? And yeah, and then everybody else has to go, and then they got to be well. Wait a minute, wait, wait. We we don't want to mow our own lawns, right? We got to keep some meatheads around to pick shit up. We don't want to have to like. If we kill too many people, then all of a sudden we have to build our own log cabins. We don't want that. So it's gonna be really like. You know, they're almost going to have like, have like their own fucking city that we don't know about, right? And everybody goes, like almost like Superman's hideout and everybody goes up there, right? And it's enough people to keep humanity going. But at this point, you'd need enough people to, you ever see that fucking thing? Like what would happen if all the people went away? And after like, I don't know how many days, like the nuclear reactors, the, uh, the, 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 they all had like the meltdowns, you know? Because whatever was going on wasn't keeping those, those fucking things that Homer Simpson always takes home with them. They don't keep it cool. Jesus, I'm way in over my head now, huh? Um, I don't know how many fucking people you'd have to keep alive, but uh, I, I just don't see it. So as far as the Dakota Access Pipeline, that's just one of those things where I watch it and I feel bad for the people that live there. And I am... I don't know enough about the other end of it. I know they're trying to make money, but they also are also trying to keep 300 million people living at a certain standard of living, right? Aren't they here in this country? I have no fucking idea. All right, Jesus Christ. That, that, that literally gave me a headache. All right, stop paying bills. Um, hey, Bill, thanks for the laughs. You're welcome. Thank you for listening. Um, in search of the solution to the fucking bankers, Oh, in search of the solution for the fucking bankers, I had a crazy thought. What if the 99% just simply stop paying all of our bills to major corporations? Mortgage, credit cards, line of credit. I'm not exactly convinced it's a solution, but you can imagine the chaos even if half of the population did that. Uh, just thought it would be interesting to get your thoughts on this. Now I must get back to cleaning this grocery store. <laughs> Fuck you and everything you do. I had to bring that back. All right. Uh, oh, did people used to say that? I like that. Fuck you and everything you do. Um, well, here's the thing. All right. Um, if everybody just didn't pay their bills, then like the whole thing would stop and, the, and they would put a lock on all the banks. I mean, all that money that they loaned out is that's your money. That's my money. That's regular people's fucking money. All right? It's not rich people's money. They're not loaning, unless they put it in a bank, I guess. Um, yeah, like that, that would not work. That wouldn't work. And then they would just be like, all right, well, then you guys have no more money. And you know them, they fucking, the super, the 1%, I mean, they, they, they got like fucking wine cellars and shit. And they got like, you know, they got like, they got like they they still they, they eat like woolly mammoth steaks, you know. They they got they got fucking food for days, for months. They they can totally wait us out. Um, there's all the only way to to fix all of this was human beings would have to have been wired differently, and we're not. At the end of the day, you know, a lot of the shit that the upper one percent is doing, I think all of us would also be doing if we had that opportunity. It's just sort of natural, you know what I mean. I don't know. Who you know, people don't handle power well. My, myself included. Um, that's an interesting thought. I have no fucking idea. I just wish that they would just they would just. You know, I pay my bills. Why can't this country pay the bills? Why can't you just keep? You know, why, why do we always got to be in this level of fucking debt? They just keep going and going and going and going and going, and they act like it is someday like the shit's not going to hit the fan. Um, Jesus guys, can, can you tell by these answers that these questions you're asking me, they're just way beyond my ability. Maybe this is why you do it. All right. Lady fan heckler question. Uh, Hey there, Bill. I'm a lady fan. And I would like your opinion on a situation. Amy Schumer encountered on her tour in Stockholm 
Early on in her set, a male heckler shouted, show us your tits. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. She heard it, had the audience point to the guy and shut him down pretty quickly with a few jokes. All right, good for her. She also sa- said if he yelled out again, she'd have him kicked out. Well, literally five seconds later, he yelled out again. Yeah, this guy's a class clown, you know. Next person who does that gets detention. And she did have him thrown out of the show. Well, it's her show. She can do what she wants. My question is, at what point would you have a heckler thrown out? Or when have you had a heckler thrown out? This is a great question. I have no problem with her controlling the vibe at her own show, especially when there were a ton of other audience members for whom the show might have been ruined if the guy kept shouting. Yeah, they came there to hear her act. You know what I mean? He got one show me your tits. She fucking rode with that and said, hey, you know, it's not like she, it doesn't sound like, you know, unless she was talking about her tits, which it doesn't sound like she was. It doesn't sound like it had any context to what she was talking about. If someone just yells that out, then if it, if someone's just going to just keep yelling, fuck you, blah, 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 or something like that, then, you know, as a comic, you can just stand there and just trash the guy for the whole hour and still get paid. But like. The rest of the crowd is not going to walk away happy. That has been my experience when you do something like that. So anyways, she continues. She says, I have no problem with her controlling the vibe at her own show, especially when there were a ton of other audience members for whom the show might have been ruined if this guy kept shouting. However, I've also seen you handle hecklers in your specials and shows without having them ejected. Um, this case might be different since his, hex- his heckle was sexual in nature. And as far as I know, no heckler has ever shouted, show us your dick. (laughs) To you on stage. Oh, my God. That would fucking kill me if somebody yelled that. Anywho, just curious is what you thought about it. The video of the situation at this link, if you want to see it. Um, Can't wait for season two of F is for Family. And best of luck with your upcoming special. Thank you very much. Um, Once you're... I don't know. I think once you're at a level where you're selling tickets and it's your crowd and everything, uh, I think you just do run your show how you want to have your show run. I know that there's comics out there that say no heckling. There's other people that don't give a shit about heckling. I'm one of those people. I don't, um, I don't mind 90% of heckling. You know, It's that 10% where you just didn't want to be there or you're, you're just completely fucking like wasted, drunk. Um, and you're just there, you're just gonna, you're gonna, even if I get the better of you, you're still just not going to shut up and you're just there to ruin everyone's good time. At that point, I would say like, listen, and, and I would, you know, give the person the money back. It's like, I'm not trying to be a dick, you know, maybe next time or go see another comic. But, um, I've only had to do that a handful of times. Um, when I first did the Opie and Anthony show, there was this guy, I remember came down. And uh, he just didn't get it. Like, he came down on the first show and was just screaming and yelling and screaming and yelling the whole fuck. It was, it was crazy. And um, then he showed up, like, two nights later again. And he sat right down front, and one of the waitresses overheard him. I'm going to yell out the punchlines to all of his jokes. So... I, what I should have done was immediately say, get that guy out of here. Get him out of here. Give him his money back. I'll take a picture with him. Just get him out of here because I don't want to deal with this guy. This guy's wasted, and it's going to ruin the show for everybody. I mean, he was here two nights ago. I can't come up with 60 new minutes in fucking two nights. And he was deliberately going there to mess up the fucking show. But the weird thing was, was he didn't go there in a malicious way. He thought it was funny. And it was one of those things that was really in the spirit of the Opie and Anthony show. But this wasn't the Opie and Anthony show. This was a stand-up comedy show. So it was an awkward thing. And and I had to get him out of there or else he was going to fuck it up for everybody. And he was fucking beside himself. I mean, you don't understand. I love you, though. You don't understand, right? So they ended up kicking him out classic way like the way a comedy club kicks somebody out is they get him just beyond the threshold of the door and immediately turn a blind eye to the person like well that takes care of that right and they inevitably come back in which this guy did 
and I was selling CDs. This is how long ago it was. I was selling CDs after the show, and I look up, and there's this fucking guy again pleading his case with me. And then he got so mad. He goes, I'm never coming one of your shows again. And I was like, good, good. The amount of stress and anxiety you brought to me, blah, blah. And then like the end of the night, someone had broken the window out front of the club. And I always thought it was him. I have no idea. So um, my thoughts on heckling is basically uh, it's a part of the art form. And I also think it's, it's a part of the art form that makes it really cool. But that's also, I don't define the rules of it. It's just one of the things that I enjoyed that always scared me in the beginning that I always thought was so cool about comics that people would yell at them and they could just handle them and then continue on with their act. Um, and the way I look at it, I say a lot of ignorant shit when I'm on stage and, uh, you know, provoke people and stuff. Like, I can't expect them to sit on their hands the whole time. And I, you know, I like it. I actually enjoy when people yell shit at me, you know, to a point. You know, but if, if it's on topic... Somebody yells shit out. I always go, what'd you say? Which is, you know, I go back and forth. You know what I mean? But, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's kind of a part of being a comedian. But I think after a while and once, you know, you said it was in Stockholm, Sweden. I mean, that's an important show. You'd be going over there. You're not like the other ones are, but you're in another country. You want to make sure you're having a good show. And right out of the gate, if someone comes, they're coming at you like that, um, they're testing you. And I know a lot of it's going to be made like, you know, oh, it's a sex thing and, you know, that's not a heckle. This, it's a this, that, that. No, it, it's, it's the basic thing where it's like you're being tested by the crowd. So what the comic has to do is throw the fucking hammer down or else the crowd takes control of the show and you're going to have a long fucking evening. So there's a million different ways to do it. That's how she chose to do it. It's her fucking show. So there you go. That's what I think. I think however the, however the comedian decides to handle it is, is the way to handle it. Um, I don't know, but I was just making all the crazy, some of the shit that people have said to me over the years. Best one ever was when I was at Dangerfields. And somebody yelled out, uh, anything red and on stage is a, and used, said faggot. <laughs> so they used like homophobia for whatever fucking reason and uh, I'll never forget that heckle because it was so like anything red and on stage it was like it was like worded like I was in second grade um, but this guy was like I don't like the, the, the anger that was coming off of this guy and the group of people that he was in with I knew if I engaged and there was no security at that club and I could not beat up him, much less him and two of his fucking friends. And I just, you know, I liked the mic stand where it was rather than wrapped around my Charlie Brown head. So I didn't say anything. <laughs> I didn't say anything. I, I've had, uh, you know, oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, the memory's coming back. I've, I've had shit thrown at me. Somebody threw dental floss at me one time. I remember I was talking about working in a dental office when I was younger, and somebody in the middle just threw dental floss like that would add to the bit somehow. I had pissed off a woman in Tampa one time, and she threw a glass of ice at me. Um, somebody threw a dinner roll at me. I had a lot of shit thrown at me. Um, and then just every fucking thing. I remember being on stage one time at the Boston Comedy Club and there was these two black women sitting in the front and there was barely anybody and it was late night and I was bombing and there was this two black women in the front and one of them had put her head on the other girl's shoulder and was pretending to sleep and it bothered me for about six years that because I had a glass of water on stage with a straw. It bugged me for six years that I didn't think in that moment. You know when you put your finger over the top of the straw and you keep the water in it to come over and just and then let it go right on her face? <laughs> <laughs> that's what kills you as a comic it's the thing you should have said or the thing you, you could have done afterwards um but i really think that that to me that is one of, like when i used to listen to the richard Pryor albums and stuff when i was growing up like one of the coolest things ever was you know 
listening to him going back and forth and his unbelievable special that he did down in Long Beach where they had him go on early. He, he just wanted to get out there and people hadn't gotten back to their seats. Like I really felt like that interaction there, it was like it, it just put him in this zone and he just stayed in there for like an hour and 18 minutes. And I think with that type of shit and the guy going up with the camera and stuff, I, like no security, I really feel like that, you know, that interaction with the crowd, you know, that energy that they were giving him, I, I think that that's what, why that, that specialist, what it is. So I'm not against heckling or anything like that, but I, you know, any, every comic, like I said, you know, if they feel like it's crossing the line, you're just feeling it's at that tipping point and I got to chop the head off somebody. Sometimes you got to do that. So good for her. All right. Emotionally cheating. Uh, hi, Bill. A big fan of your stand up in the stand up in the MM podcast. I wanted to get your advice on a relationship question. I got married to my wife last year in September, who I've known for 10 years. Um, prior to tying the knot. At the start of this year, my wife, age 30, admitted to me that she has been emotionally cheating. Jesus, she told you? Why didn't she tell you? As far as I know, no physical cheating on me, which started a couple months prior to us getting married with her 51-year-old co-worker, who's a divorcee with two kids. What? I was completely blind. He said sighted. It's blind-sided. Not sighted, blindsided, and in, and in shock when she told me this. About a month ago, she told me she needs to go find herself. Oh, yeah, she, okay. And has recently moved out into her own apartment, and we are currently separated, most likely headed towards a divorce. That's why she told you. Thankfully, we do not have any kids together. My dad keeps telling me to try and woo her back and work out our marital issues. Even if I could do that, I'm not sure I want someone who has betrayed marital trust and scarred me in such a way. What do you think? Uh, looking forward to season two as efforts for family. Keep up the good work and go fuck yourself. Um, I think you're in a great position. You should stay there, dude. Fuck this. Okay. Um, you've known her for 10 years. She's 30. So you met her real young. She didn't get to go out and go do everything that she wants to do. And, uh, yeah, dude, I would walk away. You know, if you guys are roughly the same age, dude, you still got a lot of time. And I would, you know, uh, she did you a huge favor. Just look at it that way, dude. Okay. Football season's here. Get the NFL package, you know, start hitting the gym. Just get on with your life, man. That that's what I, I would honestly do. And just, you know, get yourself in a great positive headspace too. You don't have any kids. She was upfront and honest. She's 30. She's, she's, fucking got a tongue hanging out about some 51 year old i don't know that's fucking weird to me but i'm also a guy um uh let let her go man <laughs> you know when you let a fish run on the line maybe tire it out that just i would literally throw the whole rod in the water just let that one get away cut the line fuck that like i said man um oh fuck that dude go travel go to europe go do something i don't know go yeah, you don't, you don't need that shit in your life. Thank God. You know, I actually felt relieved as I was reading that. We're going to get to the end that you guys are going to get divorced. You don't have any kids. That's fucking great, dude. You're in a great position. Don't listen to your dad. He's probably old school. It's a hell of a thing for me to say. I don't know your dad, but I just, you know, old people, are they're always into that. Work it out, blah, blah, blah. You know, fuck that. Um, I, I, yeah. Football season. Yeah, da, 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 ba, da. You know, get yourself a kegerator. Just don't get fat, you know, like me. All right, the unicorn. Uh, I love your feedback slash advice on this. I recently met a very sweet, smart, and attractive lady. Uh, we've been texting back and forth for a few days, getting to know each other, and eventually got to the how many people have you slept with question. Okay, I was up front and honest and told her my number. And when it was her turn, she told me she was a virgin. That's right, she's a unicorn. I've never heard that expression. But it doesn't stop there. She went on to tell me she's never had a boyfriend. Keep in mind, she's 21. Okay. Uh, don't get me wrong, I'm old school and love that she's a virgin, especially in this world of full of hooahs, but it's still weird. Um, 
Jeez, there's no pleasing you. You just called every other woman out there, basically, who gives sex whores, and then she's weird. All right, we went on the first date a few days later, and she lived up to my expectations. She was hot, smart, funny, and I had a great time. My question is, how is it possible that this smoking hot and seemingly perfect girl is a virgin, let alone has never had a boyfriend? I'm not complaining, but I'm wondering if she's lying or if there's something that I don't see. Well, I mean, I think you're going to physically, you're gonna, I think you're going to, you know, unless she played softball and the ball took a weird hop, right? Uh, wait, whose story was that? Oh, my God, that just popped out of my head. That was a comic from way back when. I don't even think she does it anymore. Used to tell a story on stage about how she was playing some sport and she got hit and, and broke her hymen. Um, I don't fucking know. I, I don't know what to tell you, dude. He said, what's he saying here? I don't want to get into something with her and then find out she's a crazy or worse. Thank you for the feedback. And as always, go fuck yourself. So, dude, what? Just keep dating her and just see how it goes. If she's fucking nuts, walk away. If she is great. I mean, 21, I mean, that's a little older, but I mean, it's not like 31. You know, 26, 27, that's when you're starting to go like, you know, but someone could just be really fucking walled off, really could have had overbearing parents or whatever. Um, I don't know. She kind of really let you in and told something really intimate about herself. Um, you're, you're, you're just in a spot where you're waiting for the other shoe to drop. So if I was you, I'd be asking myself, why am I asking that? Who did I date before this? That's making me think that this is going to be an absolute shit show. Now, look, I would be lying to you if I, if I said that, um, you know, if some woman was smoking hot or something like that and came up to me, I would think at some point someone would have talked her in to the rack by 21 nowadays. But 21 isn't that old. Um, I say you write it out. It's a good enough situation. See what happens. And uh, if you're worried that she's a psycho, just, you know, just don't get too fucking... Uh, you know, crazy and like with the chick. And then, you know, after a while, <clears throat> I don't know, maybe you could actually have a conversation with her at some point. Don't be so blunt. Like how, how some fucking chick as hot as you never had a dick in her. I mean, don't say it like that. Just be like, I don't know. You know what? D don't listen to me. Don't fucking bring that up. I, but I would continue to see her. If you're having a good time, I would continue to see her. And, um, you know, if you're really concerned, I would just hide the knives in your kitchen the first time she stays over. You know, just make sure the bat's on your side of the bed if you really think there's going to be a problem. But uh, that's if she even gets in the bed, so we'll see. Um, all right, that's it. That's the podcast for this week. Apologize for it being a little bit late, but, um, you know, whatever. I figure most of you had the fucking day off, all right? All right, go fuck yourselves. I'll check in on you on Thursday when I'll be in beautiful Charleston, South Carolina. All right.